You're a good man, Tom Barry. That's what the late pastor's wife always used to tell him. He was a good man. To his family, his friends, his co-workers, his congregation, and to so many members of this community. When Pastor Tom passed away last year, due to COVID-19, he left an unfillable void in the Beaches community. Tom's presence at the Beaches went back to the 1980s. After first attending Flagler College on a track scholarship, he transferred to the University of North Florida and ultimately attended a theological college in Louisville, Kentucky at the prestigious Southern Baptist Seminary. With a mission in his heart, Tom came back home to North Florida and found work as the youth minister at Neptune Baptist Church, which would shape his career and transform his legacy in our community. He met his wife, Karen, now a special education teacher at Anchor Academy, previously Finnegan Elementary, when she was a college student working as a children's minister intern. They married in 1988 and quickly grew their family with four children, Megan, Andrew, Catherine, and Emily, and one grandchild, Megan's son, Hyder Thomas. Karen fondly recalls when they were dating how Tom loved riding his bike to the church from his apartment on Florida Boulevard in Neptune Beach and squeezing in surf sessions whenever he could in his younger years. Many will remember one of Pastor Tom's enduring legacies, the King of the Hill Surf Competition. Tom teamed up with local surf shops to host the surf competition that donated its proceeds to Beam, positively impacting our community for years. It was amazing how his vision was to have this surfing ministry to reach out to the community and then it went into a sandcastle competition. Then it went into a fishing competition. It was amazing to see how much it impacted the community and grew each year, says Karen, adding that the trophies for the surf contest were designed as wooden crosses, and that Tom always made a point to try and incorporate as many local businesses as he could into the annual event. The last King of the Hill was held in October 2020, right before Tom fell ill. Karen says she is so happy that he got to be a part of that event. Tom worked year-round to ensure the event was successful, impactful, and purposeful for the gospel and the community. Besides surfing, sports were a major part of Pastor Tom's life, and he incorporated them into his ministry whenever he could. An avid baseball fan, Tom was loyal to the Atlanta Braves. He loved watching Major League games with his son Andrew whenever he had a chance. As a youth minister, youth trips were often planned to cities like Atlanta or Baltimore, where Tom could attend a Braves or Orioles game. He also started the Upwards program for youth basketball at the beach and was involved in Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Karen says his office at Neptune Baptist Church was filled with many baseball cards and memorabilia, as well as other items he collected, such as barbecue sauce, Star Wars collectibles, and of course, his impressive library of books. He was a phenomenal writer and teacher. It just came naturally from him, says Karen, adding that Tom was an adjunct instructor at UNF and was the kind of person you never wanted to challenge in trivial pursuit. He'd school you on the sports and history questions, she says. Tom found great joy in assisting his daughter Catherine and her friends at trivia night at the garage in Riverside. Outside of his deep loyalty and devotion to his family, Tom's ministry at Neptune Baptist Church was what he devoted his life to. He frequently reminded his loved ones that God gives you the opportunity to create a ministry in everything you do. Also, says Karen, an amazing wedding and funeral officiant. He really got to know the families. He would be eager to ask the family to share stories and memories about their loved ones. And Tom would always incorporate those personal experiences in their services, making each service unique, honoring, and memorable. 
Darlene, at Quinn Schultz Family Funeral Home in Jacksonville Beach, got to know Pastor Tom well over the years as he presided over many funeral services. Darlene and her team were especially kind, generous, and helpful during Tom's own funeral service, Karen says. Before his passing, during the COVID lockdowns, Tom was still intentionally connected to his church community. It was his goal to ensure that even through the most isolated days of the pandemic, he found a way to minister to them. He recorded videos for his church members every single morning when he couldn't go into work. His videos reminded me of Mr. Rogers, Karen remembers fondly. They were so encouraging, motivating, and positively challenged the listeners. Tom was so passionate about serving that nobody could get him to even think about retirement. Karen would ask him if he wanted to be a teacher after he retired from Neptune Baptist Church, but he never wanted to discuss it. He couldn't think of life outside being the pastor of Neptune and being a part of that community. That was truly one of his great loves. Tom's family could barely get him to take a vacation because he never wanted to be away from the church and its members. If he ever did indulge in a getaway, they had to be back by Sunday for the service. Even throughout COVID, he never missed more than two Sundays in a row of ministering to his congregation. And it wasn't just the church members who shared this special bond with Tom. The Neptune Baptist Church staff were an extension of his family. Tanya, Shelley, and Alan, the three amigos, and sidekick Nels spent hours upon hours in Tom's office together. His office door was always open. Tom's staff shared that he could be quite the prankster and enjoyed being able to bring levity to even the heaviest moments. He was also very accommodating of his staff placing importance on his three amigos being able to have plenty of family time. When Tom was really struggling in the hospital, he was still asking about his church community, even from his hospital bed. He regularly asked those outside the hospital about different folks and asked the nurses in the hospital about fellow Neptune Baptist churchgoers who were also in the hospital. His passing came as a shock to the family. They thought he'd be coming home, and suddenly they learned he was gone. Karen shared. I think he felt when he was ready to go that I really feel like the Lord um, reassured him that I would be okay and the kids would be okay, that he had us, which gave him the freedom to release and go, knowing that the Lord's got this and um, he's gonna make sure everything's gonna be taken care of. The Lord um, had to have said to him, do you want to go or do you want to stay? And I think it brought Tom peace knowing that he was surrounded and supported by his family, so many in the community and worldwide with prayers. Karen adds that Tom falling ill rallied the community together in prayer, and that is what he loved. Serving the Lord and teaching of His goodness was Tom's divine purpose. In the wake of Tom's passing, the Berry family learned more than ever how deeply Pastor Tom had impacted the lives of people all over the community, not just at his church. He'd be the first to have been surprised by all the people at his funeral, says Karen. I don't think he even knew what an impact he'd made. The Neptune Beach Police Department offered to provide a police escort for his funeral services. Even now, Karen is deeply moved by that gesture, as well as the memory of turning her head in the car to see the infinitely long line of cars that followed them in the funeral procession. One of the nurses who took care of Tom at Baptist Beaches wrote a heartfelt note that she gave to Karen at his funeral detailing how Pastor Tom made a permanent positive impression, not only on her life, but on the lives of her family, reminding them all of the importance of living your life to the fullest up until your very last breath. The Southern Baptist Church hasn't always been keen on women preaching, but Tom was. 
It was important to him, and he told Karen that if he passed away while serving Neptune, that he wanted Tanya McAvoy, education minister at Neptune Baptist, to officiate his funeral. He also let her know that he wanted to be buried at the cemetery across from Craig Field so he could be close and centrally located for his family to visit. That is so Tom Berry. Who thinks of that? Asks Karen. Only Tom would think of that. Tom's absence is very much felt. His staff and family still find it hard to believe. But there are bright spots. The family planned a trip to a Braves game in June on Tom's birthday, a nod to the avid baseball fan. The Braves team gave a game ball to the Barry family to honor Tom during that game. Karen hung Tom's backpack on the chair in his home office. He carried that everywhere that he went. I called it his Linus bag. Cleaning out his office, I found his backpack and I spent so much time telling him he couldn't take it anywhere, but there I am, putting it on the back of his chair, right where he would love to keep it every time he came home. So it felt like he was, he was home. And Karen adds, I saw him smile when I put it there. Tom's passion projects continue to serve community members in need. He started a food drive in partnership with Beam during COVID, where people could drive through to get food and the Neptune Baptist staff and volunteers would pray for them. Still a very active member of the community, Karen enjoys the bittersweetness of meeting people who crossed paths with Tom throughout his life and hearing the influence he had on them. And this, Karen feels, is the footprint Tom wants to leave on his beloved beaches. He loved this city. He'd want to tell everyone to love the people you're around, love your family, and make an impact in your community. And not just for an hour on Sunday. Make it a lifestyle. It's when you wake up in the morning being grateful for what you have. When you go to bed at night, you can put your head on the pillow and say, I have a really good day today. I impacted a lot of people and brought the joy of the Lord everywhere that I went. And I hope that they would feel that joy because I have the joy inside of me.